So far, you have created a block model using forms. The forms placed initially in the model have family and part information that determines what they look like and geometric information such as their base area or their perimeter surface area. But they are generic in nature and do not have data group information, meaning they are not part of the data group catalog system and cannot be scheduled and reported. We need the I in BIM, the information part of a building information model. In this chapter, you will add intelligent objects to the model, such as structural columns and beams. These objects are part of the data group catalog system and can hold a great deal of information, not only graphical data like height, width, and areas, but metadata, such as their section size, material, and structural function. As you place columns and beams in the next several exercises, you will also add data or information about each object as it is placed. In order to begin this chapter on structural modeling, you will create a new file for the structural model. This is a simple building and you will only create two models, the current station model for the architectural discipline and a new model for the structural discipline. Once the structural model is created, you will reference it back to the architectural model. Go to File and select New. Name the new file S underbar station model. Browse to select the design drawing sheet seed structural.dgn as the seed file. Again, this is a special seed file set up for this project that includes several drawing views and a sheet already created within the seed file. Select Open. Select Save to create and open the new file. Note that the grids and floors set up in the previous file are also part of this file. That is because that information was not saved to the file, but to the work set making it available in all files within this work set. Select the Structural tab on the ribbon. Note the various tools for placing structural elements. Generally, design teams approach modeling work with a set of familiar placement tools to construct models and complete designs, whereas an architectural team may use an assortment of wall, door, and window tools, a structural team we'll use several beam, column, and footing tools. Open the steel column tool. This is the common placement dialog for building elements from the data group catalog system. So what is the data group system? Note at the top of the dialog, there is a catalog type, column steel. Below that is a drop-down list of all the various catalog items that belong to this catalog type. Currently, it is set to main column. You can create a library of predefined catalog items, and you can also create new ones on the fly for your project. We'll do that later. Every element that is placed in the building model may have different requirements. For example, a steel column in a one-story shopping mall would have different requirements than those placed in the 75th floor of a skyscraper. So design teams from every discipline need a system that would enable them to assign important model data to model objects to distinguish their specific use. So this assigned catalog item data must be placed with each item instance, and the system must also track and manage the data for schedules and reporting. Note the various properties here for a steel column. Each catalog type has its own set of properties. These properties can be predefined on each catalog item, or they can be filled in when the item is placed in the model, or the object can be modified later with the addition of data, either by adding directly to the object or a group of objects in the model, or by editing 
the data on a corresponding schedule. This is the data group system. In the next series of videos, you will place structural columns, footings, and beams. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.